Hey, hola, my friends. My name is Charles Collins, and I'm the CEO of Together We Grow, and I'd like to welcome you to a very special video, a very special edition of our at-home gardening series. Now, I've received a lot of comments and a lot of great, great reviews and a lot of great suggestions. One huge suggestion is, why don't I take it back to the beginning and show you guys how to get this success, how I actually started going from the very seed, the smallest part possible of this plant, in order to get these tremendous vegetables, and more so the tremendous growth out of not just myself, not just my family, but all of you amazing folks who choose every day to jump and join in on this journey with us. Man, I can't wait to show you, I wouldn't really want to call it a secret, but just my tips, just a little bit of advice, just some, you know, a little bit here and a little bit there, maybe something different than what you're doing, maybe something different than what you know. You know, my grandmother always taught us, um, one person can know a lot, but more than one person, multiple people can know a lot more. And it's not to say that more people know everything, but we can learn from each other. So let's take it right back to the seeds, like we were saying earlier. Um, in this edition, we are going to be focusing on using rock wool primarily. And when you get your seeds, the one thing I want you to pay attention to first and foremost is that seed packet. Please read it carefully. Most of the questions that you'll go online asking from novices like me or from folks who are even professionals, you can actually find that answer on that seed packet. And once you realize that most of the stuff you know to grow a successful plant, you can find on that seed packet and you can apply it to sustainable gardening as well as traditional gardening, the world is yours. You can get out there and you can grow it all. Now, I'm not saying there won't be some um, unsuccessful attempts, because there will be. But as my friend Chad told me, that's why they give you so many seeds in a pack because you're able to make all those mistakes. So whatever you do, don't get down on yourselves. Let's take a look at those seed cubes again. Once again, rock wool, we're primarily using rock wool, which is spun stone. It's nothing but melted down and spun stone. For the most part, the rock wool that we use is spun from limestone. And in that addition, in that set that you just saw, um, I had all of the rock wool cubes still attached. But a little later on in this video, I'm gonna show you why that's not really my preferred way to grow or garden or propagate seeds. Um, to give you a little bit of what I'm talking about, when those rock wools are all together and they're all super close, just like any other super close family, they're gonna wanna hug, they're gonna wanna connect, but those roots get tied up and they get locked up and it's not really preferential for the growth of your plant. So we wanna try to avoid doing that as much as possible. Now, I love how this is still the first stage of the plant's life. The cubes are still connected. Once again, in the next video, well, not in this video, later on, I'm gonna show you how that's not the preferred way I do it. But once we separate those cubes, their very final home would be in something like this. And this is called a net cup. This would be the final stage, final home, final support set or support station for that plant's life. Now, you would have that cube sitting right in the middle there, and in all honesty, because you're using rock wool, you don't need any other type of substrate to say support. You don't need, um, you don't need clay balls, Laca. You don't need lava rocks. That rock wool cube, because of that root growth, that root structure that's taken over in the interior of that rock wool cube, that plant is gonna be happy, just like this guy. 
Happy guy, happy plant. All of those plants you see right there are started in rock wool. So I'm going to show you how we did it right from the very beginning, starting right now. Behold, our first home. Now, I love these kits, and if I can remember, I'll make sure to put a link to them on the on bottom of this video. And while I'm here, guys, if you haven't done so already, please click subscribe, hit that bell. You'll get updated when we make all the new videos. Um, we've got some really cool stuff in store for you guys. But back to this here video, we have our first home, and this is a 12-cell um plant starter, whatever you want to call it, um, seed kit. <laughs> they go by all types of name online, but whatever you do, make sure you get one that you like, one that's solid, one that you can afford, one that's in your budget. I did spend a little bit extra for this one. It actually came in a kit of like 12 or 16 of them. And it's, they're really, really solid, thick cell trays. It's a really good plastic, um, BPA free, of course. Um, it's not going to make us sick. Um, the reservoir is heavy duty as well. I appreciate the build and the quality of the um, reservoir. You see it has those little indentations on the bottom of the reservoir. And that actually helps hold the water and it provides a little bit more room for the root growth because the roots are actually going to come out the bottom of that clear part, which is the cell holder tray. Now, once we get those seeds started, and we can actually get those seeds started right from this tray, which is what we're going to do today. So you saw other techniques where I was using other trays to start seeds, all of which, um, all of the examples I was using rock wool. So we're still going to stick with rock wool in this portion of the video right here. It's cheap. It's affordable. I do buy it in um, bulk for the most part. I'll get um, three or four boxes of 50 to 100 um, cubes a piece. And it, it really does work for me. It benefits me because we go through an awful lot of them. Um, we really love starting everything from seed. And even if it's something that is working or isn't working, if we have too many of them or excess, like you see, there's 12 of them, 12 to a um, kit, we'll just give them away. And I can't stress it enough, guys. One of the biggest joys to gardening is sharing. Sharing is caring when it comes to gardening. So we have our rock wool cubes. And you'll notice we have it set next to our tray. And on the top of the tray, um, we actually have the cover. And the cover, I believe it's about um, two, or four, two to four inches high. So it adds about six inches for the plant growth from where you start to see to the top of that plant. So that's pretty good for that plant. So chances are you're never going to have to take that top off until you absolutely need to, which is right before it's about time for you to transplant that plant to its final home, albeit in one of those net cups or its final growth system. Um, we're using a Heirloom 10 Green Seeds Kit. Um, I believe I'm going with um, um, Cimarron, or it's a red lettuce. I believe it's a red lettuce. I love it. It's delicious. It's real easy to grow. We've had tremendous luck with it. Now, how do we get those cubes inside of this cell tray? Well, a little bit of scissors time. Let's get to cutting. Um, you'll notice that's why I pointed out earlier how you already had the set indentions on the rock wool um, squares. Makes it really easy to cut. Some folks will recommend that you wet it first and you let it soak in so then it gets easier to cut. I found if you have a really nice pair of reliable scissors, you don't have to worry about that. Cuts through nice and easy like that. After which, you're going to take those lines of cubes, one, two, three. And right now you can pretty much see what the next step is going to be. We're just going to line them right up with one, two, three holes on the um, tray. Now, mind you, once you get used to doing this, it does go by pretty quick sort of super fast. So let's get those scissors back out. There you go. And let's get to cutting. I don't want to take up too much of you guys' time. So we got one, we got two, and we got three. Now, folks, just because I'm using rock wool doesn't mean that you have to or other types of substrate that you can use. Um, just research. Go out there, find the one that works for you, and stick with it. If you want to, try a variety of them. I always suggest variety is the flavor of life, and that's what we go with. So that little stick right there, that's the little trick that I was telling you guys about. It's actually a Q-tip um, used to clean um, electronic devices. I use it to clean the interior of my, my phone plugs in it and other small electric on parts. And then I noticed that the um, uncovered end of it is perfect for putting those little tiny hole indents inside of the Rockwell Q. And that works great for me because I actually ordered those little Q-tips from Amazon. It's like a thousand of them in a pack or some, something crazy like that. So you get a lot of them. You're not gonna run out of them anytime soon. Now, those are those, those, are those red lettuce seeds that I was telling you about. And that's where that Q-tip end comes in handy. You just wet it. 
see what we're doing right there and into the hole now there's one part that i did leave out all right you'll notice that the um rockwell cubes are wet that's because i put about a cup of water a cup and a half of water in the bottom of that green reservoir the tray i then waited about 20 minutes for the reservoir to actually for the rockwell cubes to actually soak up that water after which I took another glass of water, about 16 ounces, and I poured it over the very top of the rock. Well, that way I can make sure that those cubes are perfectly saturated from top to bottom. So once I put that top on, that plant, those seedlings aren't going to want for anything. That plant's going to be just fine. One more step. Before we actually put that top on it, there is something that we have to do. We have a lot of excess water in there, and we are going to have to drain that because you don't want excess water, too much of it, and excess water, a little bit of food, nutrient, and light, that makes for mold. So before we actually put that top on, we're gonna take this tray over to the sink, and we're going to get rid of that excess water that you see right there on the bottom of the tray. These are simple steps. These are going to help you in the long run. Remember that top? Now remember on the top of that tray, it had those little vents with the green circle on top. We're gonna to use those green vents to regulate the humidity, there you go, and the moisture that's allowed inside of that tray. Man, you guys got it from here. You guys are pros already. Look at you, I'm so proud of you. So we've drained the water. We're gonna find a good place to keep our tray. Now, preferably the temperature you wanna keep it is between 78 to 80 degrees. Well, guess what guys? That's about the average temperature on top of every refrigerator in every home. So how cool is that? You throw that top on there, you give it as much humidity or air, allow as much moisture or air in there as you want, Bob's your uncle and you're good. I'd like to thank everyone who subscribes to the channel. Thank you guys. Thank you for everything. Thank you for the support. Without you, I just could not do this. You make this old guy happy. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Stay tuned for the next video. I hope you love it. Please share. Don't forget, get out there, plant that first seed, and together we grow. My name is Charles Collins, and we're not promised tomorrow, so embrace each moment today. Take it easy, my friends.